Okay, yeah, great. So let's continue. And now we're going to go to how to eliminate redundancy or eliminating redundancy. Firstly, what is the meaning of redundancy? Redundancy just means using more words than are necessary, and this can be problematic for you readers. Firstly, because no reader is ever going to thank you for giving them unnecessary work, and secondly, because when you use too many words, you can make it difficult for your reader to find your message under all the text. Okay? We have three types of redundancy, and the first one is repetitive wording. Um, as you remember, or as I told you before, never repeat a word more than twice, okay? Never repeat a word more than, more than twice. And here we are going to talk about repetitive wording. Now, with repetitive wording, I just mean using the same words more than once in a short space of time in a way which is unnecessary, okay? Now we have an example. Um, of repetitive wording. For example, the most positive responses were given by young interviewees. These young interviewees were highly educated. So we have here repetition, young interviewees, okay, and young interviewees again. And this is wrong, okay, this is a fatal mistake. And you should or you have to eliminate a repetition or any kind of redundancy. So we have two solutions. The first one, we can use a relative clause instead of a second sentence and a repeated phrase. As you see here, young interviewees, okay? We can remove this one or amend this one and replace it with an um, relative clause, like who, for example. So we can say the most positive responses were given by young interviewees who were highly educated, okay? So here we um, replaced young interviewees with a relative close like who. And we have another path or the second um, option or the second solution. Um, if we focus here, and now we have another option uh, we might take is to simply realize that both adjectives uh, here, for example, highly educated and young, okay, both modify the same now in interviewees, okay? So, uh, we can just put those adjectives back to back to create a sentence which reads, for example, we can say the most positive responses were given by young, highly educated interviewees, okay? So, the two options the first one is to use a relative clause, and the second one is to put those adjectives back to back to create a sentence which reads, okay? And this is the first type. The second type is redundant pairs, okay? And redundant pairs is to put two words with the same meaning together in the same, in the same sentence, okay? Just a set of two words in which one of those words is unnecessary, because the other word is already performing its job. For example, if I were to tell you that I had an expected surprise, I had unexpected surprise, okay? So I would be using a redundant pair because a surprise, okay, surprise itself, it's a very nature or by its very nature unexpected. So you don't have to say unexpected surprise. You don't have to mention both words or both or this one is redundant pair a redundant pair so you have to use just one word there is no need to use the word unexpected to describe a surprise so the phrase unexpected surprise is a redundant pair another example um, for example the results are reported and also analyzed in the following paragraphs below okay here we have two redundant pairs, the, the first one and also, okay, this one and also, and the second one following and below, okay? The word and already means something additional. So the word also is completely redundant here, okay? You have to use just one of them, not both. And the next redundant pairing is made of the words following and below. Okay, here, both 
of those words are performing exactly the same job in the sentence, okay? Both have the same meaning. So you have to use just one of them, not both of them. So for the first one, you can say, for example, the results are reported and analyzed in the paragraphs below, okay? Or you can say the results are reported and analyzed in the following paragraphs. Both are correct. So you have to eliminate um, the redundancy here by removing one of them. The last type of redundancy, okay, uh, is um, or for prepositional phrases, um, like the sentences which include prepositions like in, under, and blah, blah, blah. So what's the problem of the prepositional phrases? Problems occur when writers use too many prepositions in a short space of time. Because what commonly happens is that prepositional phrases break your sentences up into lots of little units of information, which makes it difficult for the reader to take all the information in. So let's illustrate this with an example. Um, here we have a sentence with a, a lot of prepositional phrases, as you see. Our team of researchers studied a large number of samples of water over a period of three weeks in January. And in March, we published the results of them. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, okay? Eight prepositional phrases, okay? So um, yeah, too much in, in one sentence. You have to eliminate this, so uh, you have to remove it. For example, you can say our research team, and instead of saying our team of researcher, okay? So our research team studied numerous, and instead of saying a large number of water samples over a three weeks, uh, sorry, a three week period in January and in March, we published the results. And in March, we published the results, okay? Instead of saying we published the results of them and so on, no. You have to say our research team studied numerous water samples over a three week period in January, and in March, we published the results. And here is the last type of redundancy, redundant modifiers and determiners. For example, what are the modifiers? Modifiers like individual, specific, particular, very, really, definitely, actually, kind of, sort of, or type of. And uh, what are the terms like articles A and the, or my, your, her, his, uh, or this, that, these, those, uh, those, some, any, many, and enough. Okay. Here are examples of modifiers and determiners. So here we have a sentence which contains several redundant modifiers and determiners. Okay. Any particular future study would basically, basically likely yield some similar kinds of results. Okay, particular, basically, kind of, all of these are types of redundancy. And you have to remove or eliminate the redundancy from this sentence. So you have to say any future, and instead of saying any particular future, no, any future study, would likely yield, instead of saying a particular future study would basically likely yield, no, would likely yield similar results directly without saying yield some similar kinds of results. Okay, that's all for redundancy and I would just like to finish on a note of caution which is that whenever you eliminate redundancy, you should always be careful not to lose or change any of the meaning for, from your original sentence. This can be a difficult skill to master, but if you can retain your original meaning while eliminating redundancy, your, reading, your reader sorry, will always be grateful for the better reading experience. Okay, guys? If you have any question, please open your 